everybody. Hi. Oh my God. I think I, I, I don't know what to think now. Andrew Mason. I thought I knew what I was thinking. And then I'm like thinking about what I'm thinking. You thought you knew what you were thinking, then you're thinking about what you're thinking. Is that causing you to rethink the original thoughts that you had? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Where are we? Oh. What are we doing? Have your have your percentages changed, by the way? Not really. Okay. As far After as quarterback today. in the first round, what I say, yes. 95%? Yeah, it's 95%. Yes. I don't think I'm going up from that. I mean, I guess I could if you want me to. I got spare time, but. <laughs> but for your customer's sake, for your daughter's, daughter's sake. sake. Why don't you buy a product from me? Why don't we talk about the Denver Broncos and their press conference? Mace, I don't even know where to begin with this monument. I, I think we got a crap ton of information today. Well. I'm not sure we got a crap ton of information. We got a crap ton of hints. We got some interesting stuff. You know, we got the Broncos dipping their toes into AI, for example, which yes. is uh, really interesting. It, it's good to see them using every tool at their disposal. That's one thing I'll say. But yeah, um, I think. The thing about what was said today is whatever you believed or hoped for, you heard it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want them to take to, to move up and be aggressive for a quarterback, you heard that. If you'd prefer they trade down, you heard that. If you'd prefer they not take a quarterback in round one, you heard that too. You heard all it all. there today. Yeah, all of it was there, which is to me, I, I thought there, you know, there was a lot said, but it's not like I came out of that thinking, oh my gosh, they're doing X, Y, or Z. It, it's, they kind of, they kind of put every possibility out there, not which, which you have to do if you're Broncos sitting in that situation. Did you get the feeling that Sean Payton wanted to say more? Because I, distinctly yes. got the feeling he was pulling yes. back the reins whoa girl whoa nelly whoa and george yes, sitting right next to him i'm surprised he didn't elbow him a couple of times yes I, I did get that sense um sean when he gets going it's you know it's he's a bucking bronco it's appropriate kind of appropriate to coach the denver broncos man he's a bucking bronco going all over the place right whoa whoa Mm -hmm. George Payton has kind of got the reins trying to uh, uh, trying to trying to keep him under control, but uh, I don't know how successful he is. Yeah, it's a little difficult. Let's just say that to get Sean Payton under control. But did we learn the Broncos plan? No, which is exactly what they wanted, Mace. And they said everything. So it's like, all right, I'm I'm a little confused. I'm stubborn, though. So I'm still saying move up for a quarterback until that's wrong. And I've got some information. I've talked to three teams now since I last saw you, brother. Three teams. Okay. I I think they're going to have to move up. For which quarterback? Well, here's a uh, little bit of breaking news. Okay. And uh, I'll put this out on Twitter so it's actually officially official. But you're hearing it for the first time right on this show. The New York Giants are bluffing when it comes to quarterback. The New England Patriots, I'm told, are not. So if Minnesota wants Drake May, he might be gone at three. Okay? Then this is still contrary to what I heard in January, but I'm just telling you what I know now. So if the Broncos want J.J. McCarthy, they might have to race Minnesota to get him. Because you think the Patriots are going to stand pat and and take Drake May. Yeah, the Patriots, it's so odd what they're putting together because I've also heard the Giants have done the most research on Bo Nix, who they want in the second, not in the first. The Giants okay. want a wide receiver. I've also heard that Drake May did not impress in his interviews for teams. 
multiple teams. Um, so we'll see how that happens. Now, I didn't hear that from the New England people or the buzz that I'm picking up per source, whatever I have to say. Like, it's it's even more confusing today. But I think if it's JJ, if New England is serious about Drake May, you better move up for JJ. And you're still riding 95%. Still riding 95%. It's going to be quarterback. Okay. Are you are you changing your percentage? You came um, up? Are you going down? Are you up? Are you down? What are you, Mace? I think I'm straight up 50-50 coin flip. Wow. Wow. On a quarterback in round one. Um, and... But but I'll say this. I mean, there are some things to read between the lines. There was something. There was a very long response between both Sean and George to your question at the end, right? Yes. Um. And the part of that that jumped out to me was when George Payton said, well, every now and again in the draft, Sean will say, I really want this player. Let's go get him. <laughs> All right. Um, um, yeah. I really want it's, this player. Let's go get him. So why is it 50-50 for you then? Doesn't that answer mean higher? 50-50 is the competition if the Broncos try to move up and the knowledge that they can't offer as much in draft capital as the Minnesota Vikings can. That's where it comes from. Um, the question then becomes, are the Broncos sold enough on a quarterback to include Pat Sertan in the deal? It's not something they want to do. I think George Payton definitely doesn't want to trade Pat Sertan. No. No. Um, but might Sean Payton be willing to include that if that's what gets a deal done? Yeah, that that that's that's the big question right now. It, how mm -hmm. how far is Sean willing to go to get his guy? And if he and, and if he's all in, yeah, it'll include it, it may include player capital. By the way. I know people may ask about Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton is not really moving the needle in a move up. Cortland Sutton is basically worth about a fifth round pick right now. So yeah. Cortland Sutton gets dealt. If you get to day two, even into day three, and there are teams that have a receiver need and he and they haven't addressed it and then i think you may see some phone calls if he's included in a trade up it's not substantial it's part of kind of maybe a, a draft pick uh, balancing type of thing right okay we're making this overarching deal and we'll include sutton and maybe that means you get a fourth round pick back or a fifth round pick or whatever right uh, that's that's how it would look but it would not be something where if the Broncos are competing with the Vikings to try to move up and they're competing for deals, I don't think Cortland Sutton is the sweetener that puts the Broncos over the top in any kind of draft trade. Yeah. Uh, we also learned that they have a haircut bet. <laughs> Chris talking about the haircut bet. Uh, I so uh, I was tempted Mace, although the answer to my question was a long and not necessarily uncomfortable, but I just didn't want to interrupt. But when they were talking about haircuts, I was like, can I get in on that? You guys want me in on that one? So, yeah, we got a haircut bet going on with these two. A lot of people would say you need a haircut. A lot of people would. And to that, I would say something I can't repeat on the air. But either way, <laughs> uh, I look at it and I go, all right. Um, Mike Cliss straight up asked. First question. <laughs> For, th this was. I love Mike. I love Mike. You know, you know, this is this was a, not a picture who's setting up. You know, he's bringing, he, as Nuke Lelouch said in Bull Durham, he brought the heater and announced with his presence with authority, let's roll that clip. Here it is. You know, doesn't it have to be, given this standard around here with more Super Bowls and losing seasons for a long time, Elway, Manning, don't you have to get a quarterback? 
Look, I mean, do we have to draft a quarterback? You'd say, man, it sure looks like we have to draft a quarterback. And yet, um, it's it's got to be the right fit, the right one. And if we had the tip sheets as to who everyone else was taking, it'd be easier to answer that question. Um, and so, that's the that's the puzzle here. You yeah, what you don't want to do, Mike, is force it, and uh, you know otherwise we'll be in this position next year and the years after. So you, you want to get the right player at twelve. Our first pick, we got to hit on, whether it's a quarterback, whether it's a tackle, receiver, you name it. Uh, we need to get an impact player. Okay, I love that. George Payton with a very George Payton response. Yes. He did let some things slip, though. There was at one point where George Payton said, you can never, uh, you might have the quote in front of you, Mace. He said, you can never reach too too much for a quarterback. I'm, I'm paraphrasing just a little bit, but he, he was talking about reaching. He's like, you can't reach too much. You can never reach too much. You can never, he didn't say overdraft, but he was talking about reaching. It was like, you can never reach too much for one of those guys. And I was like, wait a second, George, you don't usually say something very clear yeah. like that. Most of the time it's that answer. Like, hey, we got to get an impact player. I know. But he said you can never reach too much for those guys. Yeah. He was talking about players at premium positions because he was referring to like basically the premium positions being QB, pass protecting tackle, edge rusher, cornerback. And he said, Quote, now you don't want the huge reach, but if they are in similar graded areas or pods, then you take the value position. Whether it's quarterback, whether it's as your cornerback, you know what they are. They are a premium. You can't reach too much for those guys. You know, that would explain, even though it was the end of round two, that would explain Nick Benito two years ago. Right. Nick Benito, a decidedly incomplete prospect. And I would say certainly to this day, still a decidedly incomplete player because he is a liability in base package downs against the run. He does not set the edge well. This is why you see him, when he's used optimally, used as a, as a sub-package guy, as a third down guy. But he played a premium position that kind of tilted the arrow toward him. Of course, the other thing tilting the arrow was Trey McBride going off the board several picks before the Broncos' turn came up. If you know, if Trey McBride had dropped a little bit more, I think the Broncos would have moved up and gotten him at that point in the 2022 draft. And that would have yep. made all the CSU fans very happy. Would have made me very happy as well because I love Trey McBride. And then they wouldn't have drafted Greg Dulcich. So there you have it. Um, I, I think it's interesting. Does it say anything about Riley Moss? Because well, he brought up, you know, premium positions. Corner was on his list. Corner, tackle, edge, and quarterback. Well, I mean, he did. Um, he did. He, he did bring up Moss talking about the young cornerbacks. Now he he was asked about the need at corner and edge, edge rusher, and George had a Russell Wilson like response rattling off all the corners in the room like they like their nickel they like their their young outside guys we they have a good young group quote we like our corner group unquote and so this is twice there's been affirmation of the youth of the position and affirmation of riley moss so even though you say you're always looking that's where oh, man that's not a, that's really not a spot you can address and i think you've got to you you've got to put uh you've got to put some oomph in the parlance of vic fangio behind your belief in riley moss and put him out there look i mean when you had again the response to your question where um you know joked about sean payton saying i really want this player let's go get him uh, i think it's pretty obvious that sean was saying that about riley moss last year right because they've only been through one draft together, right? And they and the trade up was for Riley Moss, so that would tell me that Sean Payton still believes in Riley Moss too. There's no, 
no indication he doesn't. And if you're going to build this team at some point, you've got to say, okay, we've got to have faith in the players in whom we've, we've invested more draft capital. Right. And that's why if they went corner round one, um, man, that'd be a baffling choice. That'd be absolutely baffling. Edge rusher is not baffling because no. you don't, you know, we've taught, said over and over, you don't have the alpha in that room. Offensive tackle would be interesting. Dane Brugler had the Broncos going tackle at 12. Tackle's interesting because if you do that, you may say when the pick comes down, oh, there's no path for, to, for that player to be a week one starter. And if you're not talking about QB, your number 12 pick needs to be a week one starter. But you get into day two and the tackle class does fall off. The tackle class falls off and teams don't get their tackle. Does the team pick up the phone about Garrett Bowles and you end up feeling him then? So the other thing, of course, Bowles has a contract that expires after this year. So you can get kind of the long-term thought behind going tackle in round one. Um, and you can get the notion of Brock Bowers because of the talent, even yes. though the positional value isn't there tight end at number 12. So at the end, I was fortunate to get in one question. I do have the video, Mace. Part of it. How long was mm -hmm. this full answer? Like four minutes? Yes. Like, like they're just go, they're going back and forth. And like George would, George even looked at me and gave me the knowing nod. Like, is that enough? And I nodded back at him. And then Sean jumped in again. And then George jumped in again. And then Sean it jumped was, in again. It was wild because it was almost like they were kind of one-upping each other. It was really like, <laughs> okay, I told you this. Well, hey, he told you this. I'm going to tell you this. Like, I'm going to tell you that. Another level. Yeah. So, we only got part of the answer. <laughs> I mean, we got the whole so, answer. Yeah. But yeah. We're, we're going to play part of the answer, Mace. Yeah. Like, and it's, you know, we, where we, we pick up uh, – we pick up right at the point where they're where they've just talked about the haircut wager, right? Yeah. Let's roll that Let's beautiful bean footage. Yep. I mean, every now and then Sean will say during the draft, I, I really want this player, you know, let's go get him. Uh, but that's the extent of it. And, uh, but we all, that's kind of the communication throughout the draft. There's certain players that, that, um, you know, you always talk need versus talent. And, and I think one of the things that's really important is we are constantly articulate the vision. Like, all right, what do we see in year one? <clears throat> um, is he competing to make the 53 possible practice squad player? Um, do we see a guy who's going to start? Do we see a guy who's going to, you know, really articulate the vision? And so certainly there are certain positions within the framework of our team right now where um, the vision could be clearer maybe than other positions. Um, and yet that's, that's when we're talking about a clump that's so then, then that factors in. Um, but you know, it, it it's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be all done ahead of time. I mean, it's, it's in the process is it. I don't want to say it, it's enjoyable though. It's, it's like, it's long. You're in those rooms, but it's it's um, you get to know these yeah. guys. We'll there was what? more. I had to I had to cut it off. You had to trim that down because Streamyard Streamyard doesn't Andy. handle, but so much is the problem. Like I mean, I know, I know. Yeah. Look at look at George when Sean's talking, and he was like, you know, to like, taking a breath. And Sean did that thing again, dude, that he did with JJ, where he was like, he just <laughs> loves talking about ball, dude. He loves talking ball. I love it, man. I appreciate it. He loves talking ball. He loves talking about his process. Vision, right? Yes. <clears throat> you know, he uh, uh, when I asked earlier in the in the press conference about the process and of, of quarterbacking and, you know, I, I alluded to the confident statement that he had back at the combine, believing in their process, you know, and he's uh that's where he started talking about AI, right? Like <laughs> about AI and analytics by the, I mean, you know, somewhere, Pat Shermer, come, right. Right. Yeah. Somewhere Pat Shermer's head is exploding when the Broncos are talking about AI and analytics, because 
You know, for Pat Shermer famously said the only analytics that he went by were points and wins. And he liked to use a pencil. That was his thing. Pencil Pat. Ugh. Oh, boy. He's all yours, CU. Enjoy him. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it doesn't ruin Shadur. I said he'd get fired after four games, but this isn't uh, black and gold weekly. That's with Charles Johnson during the year. This is orange blue today. And Mace, um, I, I, uh, by the way, the Eagles do use AI. I did check on that. Um, mm-hmm. So they use that as well. I think it's just what teams are going to try to do to predict yeah. what other teams have done in similar points in different positions i don't think it's to scout players at all don't everyone Mm -hmm. no one should think that the on-field scouting the scouts are still doing their work i think the ai is more predictive of what a team will do yes but uh boy that that's interesting It, it analyzes patterns so i'm what do you think other teams ai is saying about the broncos oh if you're, I don't know that it's gonna be able to to ascertain the Broncos because is it George or is it Sean who's got you know the who who's making the final move because if it if you were ascertain if you're using AI to ascertain what George Payton would do defensive back baby <laughs> corner <laughs> corner 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 again yes. <laughs> uh, oh, George Payton man. did say Quinn, something. Yeah. No- Revealing. Quit Terry on or Quinion, come on down. <laughs> yeah, I'll take either one, man. And actually, yeah. Mitchell would be a preferred player. Uh, yeah. George Payton did say seven or eight QBs. Now I've got six going in near the first round. Yeah, we all know the six. But Who's he was talking. Two? He was talking more going in the mid rounds as well. I mean, I think he didn't say late rounds either. Notice that he's like, we got him early, we got him mid. He did not say late rounds. So let's six or let's, eight, seven or eight quarterbacks. Let's listen to George right now talk about that. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about our board right now, but I appreciate the question. But um, I, do, I do think it is a good quarterback class. There's seven, eight quarterbacks that we like that think can play in the league one day. I'm not going to get into, you know, how we have them rated or in the top uh, ten. No, I know, but I'm not going to not going to go there. Uh, but it is a good quarterback class. We've it's been fun getting to know them. Um, you know, seven or eight of them, and so. We think we can get a quarterback early. We think mid rounds. We think there's going to be quarterbacks, um, you know, throughout the draft that are interesting to us. I think the seventh and eighth would have to be Michael Pratt and Spencer Rattler. I agree with you. Now we Even know about I don't the, like the Rattler co- talk. But yeah, we, yeah, we know Pratt. about the we know about the connections to to Pratt that. Uh, Sean Payton has, and we know the Broncos with the senior bowl contingent they had, they met with him multiple times down there. Sean, one of Sean Payton's former assistant coaches on the Tulane staff last year, Sean Payton, obviously close with the programs down in Louisiana from his time in new Orleans. So yeah, they're, they didn't have to do a lot of extra work on Michael Pratt the way they did with others. Um, Spencer Rattler, remember he a few weeks ago was talking about how tough it was for the Broncos interview, how much preparation that he had to put in to get ready for that. Um, you may not like this, but I, I would not at all be surprised if Spencer Rattler round three ends up being the quarterback. That is way too high for the wrong guy. Like I won't say much if it's Bo Nix or whatever, because I like Bo Nix mm-hmm. enough. If it's Rattler, I am probably not going to be able to hold my tongue. Like, that's that's a mistake. It's a mistake. I'm sorry for everyone that loves him out there. Or he's a sleeper or whatever. Take him in the fifth or take him in the seventh as your second guy. Whatever. Take him in the third as your, we're going to get him ready. He's never going to be ready. He turns the ball over way too much. And nothing he does is elite. He doesn't have elite accuracy. He doesn't have elite arm strength. He doesn't have elite size. He doesn't have elite rushing ability. Like, Drew Brees had elite accuracy. Like, more Bo accurate Nick, than yeah. Olympic archer, you know? Yeah, Bo Nix has elite accuracy, short to intermediate. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, I have some Bo Nix uh, information. Shall I share yeah. that, too? Sure, why not? We'll bring Okay, now this is goes. available on PFF, and this is going to be a long one, Mason. Although, although you, OBT too. you know what? 
we are we're at 24 minutes here yeah yeah you want to do obt2 uh, let's do obt2 let's start with talking about bonex then okay all right <laughs> here we go so yes come back for more if you're watching this live come back for more tonight yes uh <laughs> what time should we put that out there seven o'clock mountain seven seven o'clock mountain yeah because we'll seven have o'clock? You know, is there a niner in there like yeah seven uh, o'clock we got a walkie talkie <laughs> so much mace so much today i know anyway. i know but yeah let's let's get to this like because we, we've done a lot of Bo Nick shows, and what the heck, we're going to do one more. <laughs> Don't you guys get sick of talking about the same thing? No? Hey, it's the, the tenor changes a week from now. We're almost there. We're almost there. And then we have to do some real work. <laughs> like it's kind, of, it's kind of fish in a barrel right now. I'm not going to lie about this. It gets a little more interesting when we start doing the post-draft shows. But then we start doing things, focusing on the fit. You know, the fit and the projection, the atmosphere and the attitude. <laughs> That's why you come to Tchotchkes. That's why you come to Orange and Blue today, 7 p.m. Mountain. We're going to have OBT2, another one, and another one. That's what Biggie would say. He's Andrew Mason. But Mace, how do you help us out here on YouTube? Do all the YouTube things like comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you never, never miss, miss a a vid. Vid. that's right he's andrew mason follow him on the socials at mace denver i'm at cecil Lamy saying obt is a bfd more news to come on obt2 thanks for watching stay tuned and stay frosty <laughs>